हेलो बच्चों कैसे हैं आप सभी थोड़ी तबीयत खराब है आज तो द एनर्जी विल बी लिटिल लो जस्ट बी अर विद दैट ओके एंड यू आल्सो टेक केयर ऑफ योरसेल्फ द वेदर इज चेंजिंग सो इट्स वेरी प्रॉब्लम दैट यू माइट कैच इन्फेक्शन एग्जाम्स आर वेरी नियर एंड दैट इज वाई योर इम्यूनिटी एंड हेल्थ इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो दैट यू डू नॉट लीज लूज इवन अ सिंगल डे सो वॉट एवर प्रिकॉशंस यू कैन टेक प्लीज टेक दैट आई कुड नॉट टेक सो आई गॉट a bit down with a little bit fever and etc so be with the low voice and low energy if at all is there well uh, i welcome you all to the daily newspaper analysis at the thastu ics mera naam ruchi singh hai so let's deal with every article before we go ahead with the discussion again let me remind that you cannot skip reading newspaper if i can if i can take class for you despite being down with fever and you know bit of headache so you for your future why you should skip reading newspaper all right so you should always uh, read newspaper without fail without a single day failing and keep looking at uh, if you are a beginner keep looking at the upsc main syllabus and keep solving previous year question paper so that you can connect what you need to read what you need to skip from the newspaper all right so we'll be dealing at four five articles which are significant for us today let's take each article one by one in detail so the first article that you need to just give a glimpse at is gdp growth for fy24 tech that 7.6 percent so what is the data that you should pick is that GDP growth for FY24 is take that 7.6 percent. So this is just something I wanted you to have a glimpse of, and then let's take other article that you have to take in detail is this one. <coughs> e evidence, new criminal law is implementation. All right. इसमें आपको क्या क्या पढ़ना है? There is <coughs> three four laws which has been uh, brought. this now now those laws has been mentioned and then further if you look in the article there is something uh, which is trying to clarify the that is clarity on the electronic record like what all will be the provisions regarding the electronic record and then <coughs> there is a supreme court judgment which has been mentioned in which that has been included while bringing those laws that has been taken care of while bringing these laws that we will look at what is the supreme court judgment and then the challenges which are there in implementing or bringing those laws agar aap heading uh, headline hi padhenge so evidence can uh, evidence e sorry e uh, whether you know it's like e evidence e hyphen v evidence new criminal law its implementation so e why it's e referring to electronic all right and then uh, solution has been mentioned further like preparedness to adopt new format etc solution format has been mentioned so let's look at the article in detail and deconstruct so the look at first few of the question which can give you a fair idea that how you should look at this article so let's i give you a practice question examining the significance of the impending criminal law reforms in india with a specific focus on electronic evidence so what is evidence uh, impending what do you mean by impending impending means some significant event that is about to happen significant event or some you know some challenging event that is about to happen so such kind of word should be in your dictionary so that you can use while you are writing answer that helps you to you know Uh, decrease the number of words uh, words you use to explain something that helps you to you know uh, complete your answer within time frame so now with this question let me tell you where this particular topic will be relevant for you in your syllabus so this is important for gs paper 2 polity in and polity in parliament the article is discussing the article what is the context the article is discussing the impending enactment of the three new criminal laws in india three three new criminal laws in india focusing on changes in electronic evidence provisions electronic evidence provision and potential challenges in adopting those revamped legal framework so this is the crux this is the context of the entire article 
so whatever has been mentioned i have tried to put it in, in various subheadings that is exactly has been taken from the article so read this <coughs> enactment details three new criminal laws bhartiya nyay samhita read the laws let's read the laws from the newspaper article itself first the three newly enacted criminal laws the bharti nyay samhita to replace the indian penal code the bharti nagrik suraksha samhita to replace the code of criminal procedure and to bharti saksha adhiniyam to replace the indian evidence act are to come into force on july 1 2024 so when it is coming and these are the three newly enacted criminal laws please note it down and when it is coming or uh, in effect is coming Uh, in effect, or uh, on July one, twenty four. At the same time, Section one hundred and six, Clause two of Bharti Nyay Samhita, which prescribes ten years imprisonment for fatal accidents if they are not immediately reported to the police, has been put on hold, no, as notified by the central government. If you read, if you remember, when we were covering about when these laws were being brought and they were discussed in the parliament, we did cover such. news during that period and we did saw we did see that lot of truck drivers went on the protest and they were demanding some of the sections some of the provisions to be uh, brought down and this was one of the uh, bone of contention and now this is on hold all right so this is few of the uh, laws which are impending which are about to come now let's reconstruct as i said enactment details these are the these are these have been mentioned here the what these are the three in uh, laws and then uh, the next point which you need to focus is <coughs> electronic evidence and bharatiya saksha abhiniyam limited changes in the indian evidence act 1872 under bharatiya saksha adhiniyam so these are the points i have taken from the article only just to you know deconstruct and make you understand what all those points are into uh, under what subheadings so limited change in the uh, indian evidence act 1872 under bharti saksha abhiniyam is there then definitions sections provides clarity on electronic and digital records including emails server logs and messages in has provisions for primary electronic evidence and admissibility of electronic records so these are the electronic evidence and bharti uh, saksha adhiniyam provisions and then <coughs> the next thing which you need to understand is there are key changes in electronic evidence laws what are the key changes <coughs> in electronic evidence laws look at this clearer definitions for primary electronic evidence introduction of terms like semiconductor memory and communication device in section 63 for better visibility section 63 deals with the admissibility of electronic records so this is the change which has been mentioned in section 63 and what section 63 says is a uh, uh, this is uh, section 6, uh, 63 deals with the admissibility of electronic records the next point that has been discussed in the article is legal clarity on electronic record admissibility about the electronic record uh, admissibility in the courts what it says let's look at this law settled on the admissibility of electronic records based on the supreme court judgment certificate under section 64 b clause 4 now section 63 it has become now section 63 of bsa is crucial for electronic record admissibility section 63 b and section 63 considered a complete code by themselves all right then impact on cyber laboratories that is another significant point that should be in consideration what is that look at this increase workload for cyber laboratories due to expert certification <coughs> potential strain on cyber labs lacking sufficient manpower and infrastructure expert opinion necessary when integrity of electronic record is disputed during trial so what are the concerns and recommendations that has also been mentioned please look at this concerns and recommendations increase workload necessitates a general awareness on drive on encryption modes and methods so these are the solution okay there have been some problem challenges all right and then what could be the 
probable solution that is mentioned there. Increased workload and uh, is there, so it will necessitate a general awareness drive on encryption modes and methods. Private agencies using electronic device for security purposes are to be informed about encryption. So these are the way ahead of the solution. <coughs> Enforcement agencies need to prepare infrastructure for added responsibility before the implementation date. All right. So this is little bit about deconstructive form of the article this newspaper. Let me take you back to the article itself again. Look at the Supreme Court judgment here. The Supreme Court judgment in Arjun Pandit Rao Khodkar versus Kailash Khushal Rao Gorantyal and ORS 2020 will still equally apply to the new provisions. In this case, the court had held that. Now you need to understand this point. The court had held that required certificate under section 63b4 okay, and that we discussed in the article what is section 63b alright and what it necessitates and here because Supreme Court uh, in one of the judgments in this judgment has mentioned few things that these judgments has been taken care of while bringing these laws in the country. That is what we are going to look at. <coughs> Section 634 of the BSA is sine qua non for the admissibility of electronic record. The other provisions with regard to admissibility of secondary evidence will not apply to electronic records as Section 63B of the IE Act starts with a non obstinate uh, non clause that is not withstanding anything contained in this Act. And Section 65A and Section 65B are completed by themselves. All right, and then if you further say, see what court said that <coughs> the court had said that if the required certificate could not be secured from the person in possession of electronic device, an application could always be made to a judge for the production of such a certificate from the person concerned in case where such a person refuses to give it. So this was stated by the Supreme Court. In this one of the judgments that is mentioned in this article and as we saw in the last uh, part of our discussion from the extra content for the uh, from the uh, deconstructed part of the uh, TPD content which I showed this is what has been mentioned in the last and there from here only I have taken those content preparedness to adopt new format this is the solution which has been mentioned and I had already provided you a shortened version of this solution in this form, look at this concerns and recommendation which we already discussed. So this is how you deconstruct the card, this article. These are the few things which I wanted you to look at and note down and note down this question <coughs> and see if you can answer this question based on the discussion and understanding of the article. Examine the significance of impending criminal law reforms in India with a specific focus on electronic evidence. So <coughs> in introduction, you have to mention the context as I always tell in such kind of questions. First, in introduction part, you mention the context and here what will be the context? The three laws which are going to be enacted on coming days. All right. And then you have to mention the significance of each in separate part or you can deal the significance of all the three laws in one go or uh, using some subheadings. And then <coughs> electronic evidences, some uh, you know the provisions of specificities on the folk which are focusing on electronic evidences. That part you have to deal in your second uh, part of the body. So first part of the body will be the significance of these three laws. Second part of the body will be electronic evidence, <coughs> any provision related to electronic evidence. And then in conclusion, <coughs> before writing a conclusion, or you can write you can write a way forward, and then you can conclude based on the concerns and the solutions which was this one concerns and recommendations all right <coughs> this you can write in way ahead in the uh, conclusion part okay then the next article is about <coughs> informal sector in waste management understanding the world of the informal waste picker so Waste pickers are very much important. They are the one who keep the environment clean, but they come under informal sector. 
एक तो already their situation is quite marginalized and then they are into informal sector. This kind of waste picking is uh, activity which comes in informal sector. So what is uh, what is this particular you know on the global level? What are the laws? What are the coverages or the situation related to waste picker? That is to be seen. And then what are the problems? The challenges they are uh, facing. That is to be seen. What is uh, waste picker uh, as informal sector? the meaning of it that we'll see some data we'll see on the world level and finally we'll see the waste picker or the informal sector in the waste management at the india level so for this let's look at this one <clears throat> the first line the first paragraph on march 1 international waste pickers day waste pickers across the world so today is first march and today it is international waste pickers day all right and uh, that is why this is the context of this article then waste pickers across the world will pay homage to fellow pickers who were murdered in colombia in 1992 so waste pickers were murdered in colombia in 1992 and on this day that is first march international waste pickers will pay an homage to those people murdered all right so this is the context of this article then there is a definition of international labor organization which has defined informal sector in waste management and then there are some data as i said which has been uh, mentioned in this article related to informal sector in waste management and about the waste pickers and that we will look at in our deconstructed form of the content and then extended what is the meaning of extended producer responsibility here that is mentioned that is there and then the next third thing which has been mentioned at the end with this in this article is plastic pp a just transition and finally there has been way ahead and some of the solutions which can be or initiatives which can be taken to protect the interest of waste pickers waste uh, pickers or the informal sector in the waste management all right so before we take the discussion let's look at a question first and let me show you a pyq also which was on the similar line and has been already asked by upsc so this article becomes important for us to uh, again because there has been a similar question asked let's look at the pyq first what was the pyq read the pyq which is on the screen <coughs> so what are the impediments in disposing the huge quantities of discarded solid waste which are continuously being generated how do we remove safely the toxic waste that have been accumulating in our habitable environment this was asked in cs paper 3 2018 upsc in 150 words 10 marks so again impediments in disposing the huge quantities of discarded solid waste and then uh, you have to know how what is the quantity of the solid waste that is being uh, generated every day in india and the global level as well and then how to remove safely the toxic waste that have been accumulating and this negatively impacts the habitable environment this was the question in paper 3 now once you read this article you should be in a condition to deal this particular question read the question which i have given you for a practice how can extended producer responsibility that we'll understand what is extended producer responsibility in waste management ensure social inclusion so how can extended producer responsibility in waste management epr in waste management ensure social inclusion of who waste pickers and protect the rights of informal waste pickers all right so inclusion and protect <coughs> ensure inclusion how can epr ensure inclusion and protect the rights of people who informal waste pickers so this is a question let's say this question is asked to you in 250 words 10 marks so how do you deal with this question let's read the content okay and uh, if i show you if i tell you what is the significance of the context of this article which part of the syllabus this is significant for so paper 2 social justice okay paper 2 social justice vulnerable section crucial for upsc examination challenges faced by informal waste pickers epr implications and the need for sustainable plastic management this is very important 
for exam perspective it can be asked in mains so what is the context the context says that article underscores the necessity of recognizing informal way speakers so this article is about recognizing identifying the importance of informal way speakers addressing challenges in extended producer responsibility and emphasizing a just transition in the upcoming plastic treaty to ensure sustainable waste management so this is the context in which we will <coughs> think of this article okay and if you talk if you th if you think about the background of this article background i've already mentioned that we have already read from the very first paragraph of the article that is uh, you know this is uh, first march is international waste pickers day and uh, it commemorates pickers murdered in colombia in 1992 and waste pickers are paying homage to those murdered in california 1992 so this was the background let's understand what is informal sector in waste management let's read about it so ilo defines informal sector in waste management as unregistered individuals or small enterprises in waste management okay so this has been defined by who inter inform international labor organization ilo itself okay so this is the definition you must remember primary collectors of recyclable waste recyclable waste contrib contributing significantly to resource efficiency face marginalization all right they they face marginalization lack of recognition is there lack of representation is there and exclusion from social security and legal framework so informal sector in waste management face all these problems or the challenges okay now as i said if you know there are challenges you should back your answer you should back your uh, argument with some data and facts so what are the data and facts that you can show here and that i have already taken from the article itself here we are doing nothing we have no, we are not reading anything extra this is no addition but this is just deconstructed all uh, at form of the article which is mentioned which is there in the editorial page i have taken every word of the art from the article itself and noted down and written down in constructed properly you know arranged form in different subheadings etc so this is also uh, you know when you read that is how you should look at the articles you should think how you, whatever content you read how you can put it in different subheadings okay so data on informal waste pickers global estimates indicate that the informal waste economy employs how much informal waste economy it employs 0.5% to 2% of the urban population in india approximately 1.5 million waste pickers in the urban workforce with half a million being women so if there is 1.5 million people in urban areas uh, employed in the waste picking okay then 75 1.5 150 70 like you know 7.5 are the 75 million are in the this uh, are the women they are constituted by the women so okay half of the 1.5 million half of the 1.5 million is constituted by the women imagine what the challenges which they face we have looked at the data now let's look at the challenges being faced what are the challenges subordinate position in the caste hierarchy compounds issues so it has been seen that people who belong to the lower hierarchy of the caste system they are the one who are into this uh, waste picking work okay private sector participation in the waste management alienates them exhibiting or oh, exhibiting vulnerabilities private sectors use of expensive machinery marginalizes informal pickers pushing them into hazardous waste picking so these are the challenges they face now the question which i gave was asking you about extended producers responsibility okay let's look at what is the meaning of extended producer responsibility EPR gains traction in India for plastic waste management holding commercial waste producers accountable in practice EPR redirects waste away EPR redirects waste away from the informal sector potentially displacing informal waste pickers EPR guidelines in India lack clarity on the inclusion of waste pickers and they are representing organizations so there is no clarity with respect to uh, representation of the uh, waste pickers 
in the guidelines of the EPR. Okay, so these are the extended. This is about EPR in case of informal uh, sector in the waste picking. If then next point which is there, which is mentioned in the article is global role of waste pickers. What is the global role of waste pickers? As I said, we will be dealing the uh, role of waste pickers in India. But before that, let's understand global role of waste pickers. Globally, waste pickers collect up to 60% of all plastic crucial for sustainable recycling. So this is one significance of the global waste pickers, waste pickers globally. Second is, informal waste pickers collect 27 million metric tons of plastic waste in 2016, preventing environmental damage. Then third, the plastic treaty must ensure a just transition for waste pickers. Alright, so these are the global role of the waste pickers. India's plastic waste challenges. Now, we come to India's uh, the level of uh, we come to talk about India and waste picking challenge. India's per capita plastic waste generation is rising. Plastic overshoot days generate six disease a fact. EPR mechanism involves large recycling units excluding the informal workforce responsible for waste transformation. Waste pickers possess traditional knowledge that could strengthen the EPR implementation. And in the article itself. This is exactly as has been mentioned, which you can understand that how you should write conclusion of various questions, various kinds of questions. Let's say this kind of question we are, uh, which are we are dealing, how you should write conclusion for such answers. Lot of students do, uh, they come and they ask how to write introduction and conclusion. So if you read newspaper regularly, you can understand how the writers in the editorial pages on various issues write the last paragraph. That's how you learn how to write a conclusion for various answers. Okay, questions. So let's read the conclusion. There is a need to rethink EPR formulation to integrate informal waste pickers into the legal framework. Acknowledging traditional knowledge and expertise of waste pickers in waste management is necessary. So acknowledge the expertise, traditional knowledge and expertise of the waste pickers in waste management is necessary. The, these are some of the conclusion the way forward which is helpful for better EPR mechanisms in India for waste pickers. Okay, let's look at waste management challenges. Abito, we did look at the waste management challenges at the global level. Let's deal with few of the uh, areas which is going to be particularly focused for India in terms of waste management. Okay. Let's say if I give you a question, what the what is the condition of waste management in India? Uh, uh, discuss the challenges and the way forward of the solution. So, waste challenges. How, what are the waste management challenges in India? First, inadequate collection and segregation is there. Second, landfill overburden is there. Limited recycling capacity is uh, one of the challenges faced by the waste management in India. Then. The second point is informal sector backbone of waste management. So informal sector is the backbone of the waste management. Waste pickers, individuals who collect short, who are the waste pickers? They are the uh, individuals often marginalized who collect short and sell recyclable materials from dumping yards, streets and households. If you see then iterant waste buyers, who are the iterant waste buyers? Operate door to door buy recyclable materials from households and businesses. Scrap dealers, who are the scrap dealers? So these are the informal sector uh, backbone of waste management. These are the various categories. Waste pickers, iterant, waste buyers, scrap dealers, kabadi walas, aggregators and wholesales of recyclable waste, connecting informal collectors with the recycling industries. Crucial contributions, the informal sector plays a pivotal role in diverting waste from landfills supplying raw materials to the recycling industry and providing livelihood for significant population. So these are the informal sector uh, and how it is making a backbone for uh, by how this is the waste management and this is contributing largely to the informal sector. Okay. I mean these are the informal sector and the informal sector is where waste management uh, employ people who are working into the waste management, they form the backbone. Okay, so next thing is the challenges for the informal sector. 
if you see there are the challenges which are being faced by the informal sector what are those challenges marginalization and poor working conditions is there exploitation is there and limited recognition is there for the people who are working in informal sector but then what are still some of the positive things we have to look at what are the opportunities for improvement integration are the like integration uh, if you have this is about way forward and this we are talking in particular with the india india okay do not forget so integration recognizing and integrating the informal sector into formal waste management system okay and providing protective measures and supporting their corporate just a second yes protective measures and supporting their cooperatives second is increase recycling promoting resource uh, segregation and investing in decentralized waste processing and recycling infrastructure policy support establishing comprehensive policies that recognize the critical role of the informal sector and provide them provide them with social and economic security so this is about the second article the fifth article that is you need to look at is should minimum support price be legalized and if you have watched that session of dna when the farmers protest started at the delhi haryana border and their demands with their demands we had discussed what are the various demands put forth by the uh, farmers uh, protesting at the borders and uh, one of the demand was that legalize msp okay and we had discussed in detail what is msp what are the pros and cons of the uh, legalizing msp what are the challenges etc and what is the way forward please go back to the earlier sessions of dna and try to complete every session because you see newspaper reading if it seems difficult today let it feel difficult today but i challenge you if you read newspaper continuously your burden your you know the tension related to newspaper subside gradually because what happens is most of the news is quite related is quite repeated if you have already covered some of the important news articles in detail in one fine day subsequent days you will understand okay i don't have to read this because i have already covered and let's skip it a lot of time you start uh, saving for newspaper reading all right and that is one of the proof i am giving you we have already dealt with should minimum support price be legalized in india okay go back to the previous sessions of dna complete it your newspaper reading uh, all the challenges will go away but you have to have patience with reading newspaper okay that is what i wanted to say then let's see if we have to yeah i think this is it for today this is all about today's newspaper this is three four articles you need to have focus on please keep reading newspaper till i'll see you in the next session till then all the best and tatastic